Hello friends. Today I am going to show the surgical technique of trabeculectomy with mitomycin C and releasable sutures. These are the list of consumables: 80 vicryl suture, PVA sponge sphere or Vexel sponge, mitomycin C injection, 10-0 nylon suture, and cefuroxim injection. We should carry out the visual fields of the patient in advance. Both of the visual fields are showing the advanced visual field effects. The patient profile is a 35 year old male with primary angle closure glaucoma with advanced optic atrophy. The target is to achieve a posteriorly directed flow or posteriorly directed flow in a post trabeculectomy blab. So to start with we will place a traction suture or superior rectus or bridal suture to depress the globe downwards when we will be making a making a blab to start with a peritomy is performed with the help of vescort scissor conjunctiva along with tenons is separated from the sclera conjunctiva is separated incised at the limbus care must be taken not to puncture or perforate the conjunctiva or the underlying sclera the adequate exposure of conjunctiva is achieved the excess tenon which is not separated from the sclera can be excised a large space is created under the conjunctiva to place the mitomycin sponge mitomycin is a anti metabolite which delays scarring or fibrosis and it increases the life of a filtering blab a cautery is performed to achieve hemostasis the wet bipolar cautery may be used excess of cautery should be avoided and cautery is avoided near the limbus So this is how we soak the vexel sponge in mitomycin C that is the concentration of mitomycin C is 0.02 mg per ml the concentration of mitomycin can be increased in the pigmented rinses so this is how we insert the mitomycin sponge under the last space that we have made under the conjunctiva this mitomycin or cytotoxic of anti metabolite soaked sponge can should be placed under the conjunctiva it can be placed up to 2 to 5 minutes i usually keep the mitomycin sponge for 2 minutes the contact of this mitomycin is avoided is avoided to, uh, to the limbal area or to the cornea the this sponge the number of sponges should be counted and they should be removed according to that only the each piece should be counted when they are removed 
so that it avoids the chance of retained sponge in the conjunctiva or in the under the conjunctiva that's the reason some people some surgeons may use a single piece of vexal sponge to avoid any retention of this mitomycin soaked sponge under the conjunctiva the underlying conjunctiva and sclera is thoroughly washed with copious amount of balanced salt solution to start with the making of scleral flap we first measure the area where we are going to make the scleral flap the height of the flap should be 3.5 mm 3.5 by 3.5 both sides and the roof should be around 4 so the length and width should be around 3.5 by 4 or 4 to 5 mil 4 by 5 mm rectangular i usually make a rectangular flap a crescent blade is used to make a half thickness of sclera scleral flap first a plane is created the half thickness scleral flap is made very carefully care should be taken not to puncture the sclera or not to make a premature entry the target of the scleral flap is still scleral spur this is a landmark we should take care of we should not cross beyond the scleral spur in the cornea should be we should remain anterior to the scleral spur after completing the scleral flap we are going to make a sclerostomy or scleral block i usually give to replaced sutures at the corners of scleral flap so that it will be easier later on after making the scleral block to close the anterior chamber because there are high chances of anterior chamber shallowing after entering entering the anterior chamber immediately after entering the anterior chamber after sclerostomy there is a sudden collapse so just to avoid that we should make we should place these anchoring sutures pre placed anchoring sutures with a very sharp blade we should place we should incise the 
area we want to make for scleral block. Just play inside that area. Just place a single incision and enter the anterior chamber. After entering the anterior chamber, the aqueous gush, we feel the aqueous gush. A paracentesis is made to maintain the anterior chamber. We can push the balanced salt solution into the anterior chamber and keep the anterior chamber formed with the help of the side port. The scleral block is made with the help of one scissor. You can see the iris is pushed outside this scleral block. There is a prolapse of iris. So it is slightly pushed inside the anterior chamber. And after iris is reposited back, the anterior chamber is formed. We do a peripheral aridectomy with the help of Dabacker's scissors. Per peripheral aridectomy is performed and Now it's time to close the anterior chamber by tightening the pre-placed scleral flap sutures. Iris is prolapsed back into the place. At this point, we can also use any mito this uh, meiotic agent like uh, pilocarpine. Now. The pre-placed sutures are tightened. Care must be taken that pre-placed sutures, that scleral sutures, starting two scleral sutures, should be tightened equally on both the sides. If one-sided suture is tight and other is loose, there are chances of excess leak from the scleral flap. Similarly, the other scleral suture is made, tightened, sutures are applied on both sides of the scleral flap. The anterior chamber should be formed all the time intraoperatively. The Intraocular pressure should neither be very high or not very low. It should be around 10. You can 
feel it digitally all the time. So now we are going to place the releasable sutures. This is the technique of releasable suture. We play, we start with a 10 zero nylon from upside of the conjunctiva and take it to the other side of the flap. and place a 3 one, one knot the suture superior to the conjunctiva is left there only after the surgery which can be later on adjusted Increase the flow or if the pressure is high post operatively on slit lamp only. The conjunctiva is closed watertight with the help of 80 Vicar or 10 0 nylon. The conjunctiva closure should be watertight. This is formed and checked for any leakage. The antibiotic eye drops are applied and the, I also gave a subconjunctival injection of zephyroxin. The eye is patched and patch is opened next day. See how nicely the blab is formed. You can check the formation of blab on table only. This is the injection of subconjunctiva or cephalosim injection. So we can see a large blab. This is two weeks post-operative picture with a releasable suture. Thanks for watching.